I feel like we haven't really talked about Tana Mojo in a long time now. Of course, there's the fact that she's friends with James Charles again, but that's not what we're talking about today. Tana is being called out this week over one of her podcast episodes where she talked about this wine tour she went on and how much she hated it, but more specifically, how much she hated her tour guide. People feel like she really crossed the line with how she talked about this lady, and I have to admit, it's pretty bad. It's a mess, so let's get into it. A few weeks ago, Tana and a few of her friends flew over to London to do a video with the Sidemen for their channel, and to make the most of their trip, they decided to travel a bit through Europe. They eventually ended up in Paris, and that's where all this drama went down. After getting back from the trip, Tana posted an episode of Cancelled, where she talked about this horrible experience she had on a wine tour they booked in France, and how it was all due to this tour guide named Cynthia. Now, normally when Tana does a story time, she usually switches up the name just to make sure her fans don't go and harass whoever she's talking about, but not this time. Tana literally wrote down this woman's name and the name of the wine cellar they visited so she could pretty much dox her to her audience. Good. I'm actually good. gonna be calling her by her name. Oh, is she horrible? Cynthia. Is that Cynthia? I wrote it down. Let me make sure it's Cynthia. 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 Cynthia! <laughs> Uh oh. Tana explained how this specific wine tour was recommended to them by a close friend who said they had the best experience. The night before they were set to go on the tour, Tana, of course, was out drinking until 6 a.m. She had no sleep due to her own choices, so she was going into this 8 a.m. wine tour with an already poor mood. She said this guide met them at the train station at 8 a.m. to get on what Tana calls a three-hour train ride. Now, we all know that Tana tends to exaggerate her story times because according to the tour guide's website, the train ride is only about an hour and 15 minutes, not three hours. Tana's apparent bad experience started on this train ride. She said that she was told there would be food on the train, but there was no food, so she was hungover, tired, and hungry. Tana said the tour guide asked them if they wanted to have a more educational tour or a fun wine tour, and they all said fun. But Tana feels like they didn't get that fun wine tour experience. Instead of engaging with the tour guide on the train, Tana decided that she was going to have a sleep, but Cynthia woke her up and started to talk about champagne. So then I put in my headphones for what is probably one minute, and I intend on sleeping on this two and a half hour train ride. It's Cynthia. Cynthia. I take my headphone out, and she proceeds to go on a 30 minute tangent to me about why Vouve Clicquot Champagne is called Vouve Clicquot Champagne. Shut up, Cynthia. <laughs> and Ty has a video of me that I'll try to insert in this podcast, and I'm looking at her, and I'm still trying to be nice, but I have tears in my eyes. I'm like, oh. That's amazing. You should have just like, told her you already knew. She then found out that they would be walking this entire wine tour and said some of her friends were even in heels and weren't prepared to walk for what Tana calls seven miles. There was also a stop on the tour that had a lot of stairs and immediately Tana was like, no, I'm not doing that. And then I put my headphones back in. I'm trying to chill again. Another tap on my shoulder. She lets us know. First of all, the history of one of these sellers for another 20... This woman, I have never met someone who flaps their gums like this. Flapping her gums, flapping her gums. And she happens to just drop a fact that one of the sellers that we'll be hiking to has like 550 stairs to get up to the top. And I look at her and I'm like, can we skip that one? And she's like, you cannot skip that one. It is the origin of this and this. And hold I go, I don't care if Barack Obama was at the top of those stairs, I am not fucking walking up those stairs today, Cynthia. And she looks at me and she goes, well, normally I can ask for elderly people, but since we have someone with mobility issues on this trip, I'll have to ask them if we can yeah, get Yeah, we elevator. sure do. Mobility issues? Tana went on to explain that the tour guide was guiding them through the wine tour, just like a tour guide is supposed to do, but her giving them all this information on the wine and the soil and where they were was really making Tana mad. So she decided it would be a good idea to put her headphones in. Keep in mind, Cynthia was just doing her job, letting them know the history of the place they were in. That is what Tana paid for. 
Cynthia then decided to tap Tana on the shoulder and ask her to take her headphones out because it was rude. And finally, I just cannot hear another word about the fertilization of the grass. And and it's not even like she's just educating us on the tour. It's like this woman is telling us her whole life story and her daughters and what her husband does and how many people live in the vineyard and who they are and whatever. And like, did we not tell you we didn't want an educational tour? Like, have you ever shut the for six seconds it's like, so eventually i put in my headphones and she turns around and she taps me and i take my headphone out and she says can you please take your headphones out no nope. you are being extremely disrespectful cynthia we paid you <laughs> literally we paid you. I'm not, i dropped out of school because of like you i don't want to learn about fertilization of grass in the middle of france in a town of a population of 300 at 8 34 a.m after i've just walked a mile and a half and there's yet to be a glass of wine in my hand and i mean it is pretty rude you paid this lady to guide you through this town into the wine cellar and instead of listening to what she has to say you have headphones in completely ignoring her it's rude. This woman is just doing her job. It's clearly something that she's really passionate about. And I'm sure she's not used to a bunch of influencers coming on her trip hungover, thinking they're gonna have this personal chauffeur to drive them through the fields. Now, the whole time Tana was there, all she was doing was trying to get home. She was contacting car services to come pick her up. They had this lunch booked at a really nice restaurant and Tana was even asking Cynthia to cancel it like she just really wanted to go home. Now, once again, keep in mind, Tana and her friend group weren't the only ones on this tour. This was a public place filled with people with their own tour guides who were actually prepared, not hungover, wanted to be there, and wanted to learn about the place they were in and how wine is made. Were there people on this tour who wanted the education of it all? Yeah. That's the problem. I, like everyone else there was like 45 or like you could just agile people who like knew it was this wearing a workout. Oh, so wait, was it not just your group? No, there were different tour guides. Okay. And you know what sucks too is a lot of them were like fun and young and nice. Like we somehow got stuck with Miss Grizzle in her 80s, yeah. you know? Even though the guide did ask Tana's group if they wanted to have a fun or educational tour, some education is still gonna be involved when they're walking as a whole group. Just because Tana and her friends were hung over doesn't mean the tour should be ruined for the people who actually wanted to be there. Tana said when they finally got the chance to go inside and have some wine, Cynthia decided to sit down with them, which made Tana even more frustrated. Once again, keep in mind, this is a wine tour and Tana paid Cynthia to be their tour guide. Of course she's gonna sit with them and talk about the wine. That's why she's supposed to be there. They're not there to drink a bottle of wine and get drunk on their own and act crazy. They hired Cynthia to teach them and that's what she's just doing. Tana went on to say that if any of her other friends who are more outspoken had have been there, they would have fought Cynthia. Amari, Love. if you would have been there, we would have molly that woman like think it was other people who are like better than the fighters like if it was Ari like if it was the the volatile Vegas ones would have spit in that I face. think even I would have been mad and you know you would have been so mad you and, I would have, you and I would have been so fun one of Tana's friends thought it would be an acceptable joke to pick up a bottle of wine and pretend to down it and Cynthia made a joke about only letting civilized people try the wine and that completely set Tana off at one point, Tana walked off and one of her friends had to come over, calm her down, and try to explain to her that Cynthia felt bad that she wasn't enjoying this tour and how this is just her passion. Tana decided to go back, give it another try, and when she did come back, Cynthia was still educating them on the cellar they were in and completely uninterested, Tana went on her phone and Cynthia did not appreciate that. And I opened my phone to receive a text message. Oh no. And she turns to me like a teacher and goes i'll wait the car service that tana called ended up canceling on her so cynthia offered tana and her friends to catch a ride in the van that the wine cellar had tana agreed but then she realized the car wouldn't get there until after the lunch they planned and then canceled would have been so tana was like well we might as well go to the lunch cynthia was then like but you told me to cancel it it's canceled and that's where things really started to escalate screaming at me. You said you wanted to cancel. You said you wanted to cancel. You said you wanted to cancel. 
and I'm looking at this. I did. I do. I do. Like, and it gets like that. Like, it starts getting like very much. Choppy. We're escalating. I'm using my hands. I'm ready to f- go with this. And we're going back and forth and we're like yelling. I grab the bottle of wine. I pour it up as fat as I possibly can. I chug it down boots and I just walk away and walk it off, right? The wine seller's car service eventually arrived and Tana absolutely lost her mind when Cynthia got in the car and joined them on their way back to Paris. Cynthia, get in! Now why? A woman is now riding with us for three hours Wait, to wh- Paris, France. I really don't understand why Tana found this so outrageous. They hired this tour guide to come with them. It's literally in the itinerary that we're going to go over in a bit that this guy travels with you to and from the destination. They're using the car service provided by the seller. Of course, Cynthia is going to get in and go back with you. Should she just stay stranded at the wine tour because your car service that you hired to leave early canceled on you? No. Of course, Tana said the car ride back was equally as horrible as the tour. Apparently, Cynthia started to talk about her dislike for influencers, specifically Tana, and honestly, at that point, I can't really blame her. In our town, we hate girls like her. Like, she's going on, like, a whole thing. Like, why would you want to ride? I I don't know if in their town of 300 it is just, like, anti-influence. I don't know, like... I mean, who knows if Cynthia even really said all of that. Tana's stories are usually so stretched for dramatic effect, so for all we know, maybe the tour guide never even said any of that. Brooke herself even mentioned how Tana has a habit of embellishing and questioned if that even happened. And she looks at me and she asks me, where are you going after you're in Paris? And I go, oh, I think I, I think we're going to go to Positano. I think we're going to go to Italy. And she goes, good luck with all the stairs there. Three days, four days later now. And she says, they may love her in America, but girls like her are nothing to us here. I will say you do embellish sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> they ended off the episode by saying that they don't want Cynthia to be around anymore, if you know what I mean. Just completely uncalled for, so immature, and so wrong to say on a public podcast, or at all, honestly. Anyway, since Tana made this guide's name and workplace public, of course Tana's fans found the business and they started to leave a ton of negative reviews. Cynthia is an award-winning tour guide. She's won multiple awards for Best Wine Experience in Paris, Wine Expert of the Year, and even Top 50 Wine Experiences in the World. All Tana's fans had to do was Google Cynthia Wine Tour Paris, and her personal website pops up with all her information. Now, I'm going to show you guys Cynthia's website so you can understand more about what Tana booked, and the only reason I'm leaving Cynthia's name in is because she actually gave a public comment to NBC after she received a ton of negative reviews and hate from Tana's fans. I'll get into her comments to NBC in a few minutes, but first, let's go over her website. Cynthia has a clear passion for wine and supporting women in the wine industry. Her website says, Delectable supports women in the male-dominated wine industry by only using champagnes made by women, only taking guests to visit champagne houses where women play an important role, telling the stories of the women behind the bottles, and giving women the tools and confidence they need to buy sparkling wines from around the world. Cynthia is actually Canadian, but she spent nearly the last 30 years living in Paris. She says she loves to travel, she loves wine and people, and she tries to combine those three things whenever possible, which is why Cynthia offers these wine tours. The website shows the wine tour Tana signed up for, and as much as Tana wants to try and say that she thought she was signing up for something completely different, they didn't know how to dress, they thought there would be food on the train, they thought it would be fun, literally all the details are on the website, so I don't know where Tana got her information from. Here's the itinerary for the tour that Tana signed up for, which reads... 8 a.m. Meet Cynthia at Garde de train station in front of track 7. I'll be carrying a blue backpack. 8.30 8.30 to 9.45, train from Paris to Dormans. During the journey, I will talk to you about the history of wine, geography of the region, and how the industry is organized today. Walk along the Marnie River and through the vineyards to Champagne Pio Civilano. 
During the walk, I will talk to you about the challenges of harvest this year and some of the rules and regulations in the vineyards. From 10.30 to 12.30, they're doing a private tour of the vineyards, press center, tank room, and cellars. Then they were gonna go have lunch, and then a driver was gonna pick them up and take them to Ron's. From three o'clock to four o'clock, they were getting a private visit of Champagne Pomery, a big house with beautiful Gallo-Roman chalk cellars filled with fun modern art. You will enjoy a cellar visit as well as a tasting. Cross the street to visit Villa de Moiselle, a beautifully restored Art Nouveau mansion. Visit followed by a tasting. Five o'clock to 5.30, scenic walk to a cathedral. Visit the cathedral, talk about the history of the cathedral and role of Joan of Arc. 7.15 to 8 o'clock, train back to Paris. During the journey, I will talk to you about whatever you want. Never did it say there would be food on the train. It explained in detail what Cynthia would be talking about. It said multiple times that Cynthia would be traveling with them. It explained in detail how much they would be walking. It's not Cynthia's fault that a bunch of entitled influencers from LA signed up for her tour, showed up still drunk on no sleep, and had an absolutely horrible attitude with her. You can travel to different countries with different cultures and different levels of acceptability when it comes to respect and expect to be treated the same way you're treated in LA. Signing up for an educational wine tour and expecting to get drunk and down bottles of wine is not what a wine tour is about. Cynthia actually gave an interview to NBC and she said as a tour guide, her duty is to make sure her guests are drinking responsibly. She said, You have a responsibility and a legal obligation to encourage people to drink responsibly. If you read the small print on my website, it says you're encouraged to drink responsibly, Katu said. So all day, if I wanted to be a responsible professional, I had to promote and encourage that. All my decisions were, how can I remain as professional as possible and try to make everyone happy? Cynthia also talked about the aftermath of the podcast and how all these people were trying to destroy her business and try to find out personal information on her. NBC wrote, After the podcast episode was released, Katu said that she started to receive strange messages from people on Instagram. One person sent her a link to the podcast. After listening, Katu said that she reported Tana to the police in Paris where she lives. She declined to share a copy of the report with NBC News, citing privacy concerns. NBC News observed more than five negative reviews and comments newly posted on the tour guide's personal Instagram account, as well as on Google reviews for the Champagne House. Katu said that she read some of the comments, which included some of Mojo's fans threatening to hurt her, hurt her business, and even find her phone number. If you decide to book a tour here, ask for anyone but Cynthia, one review on Google said. Another said, couldn't enjoy the tour due to how unprofessional the guide Cynthia is. Avoid her at all costs. Which just goes to show you how immature some of Tana's fans are. Trying to destroy a woman's business because Tana showed up drunk and made herself have a horrible time? Cynthia has won awards for a reason. Her Instagram comments are filled with people talking about her tours and how amazing of a time they had. There's a common denominator here and it's Tana. Tana is even in trouble with one of her sponsors now over this whole situation. During the podcast, Tana was sponsored by Babbel, and she said in her sponsorship read that she wanted to use Babbel to learn Cynthia's native language and tell her to shut the up. Babbel immediately dropped Tana and gave a statement to NBC News saying, This absolutely does not align with Babbel's company values. Highlighted here, Tana is obviously not a person who understands or celebrates the difference in cultures, and we regret to be in any way involved with her. Yikes. Initially, the comments under Tana's podcast were all from her fans and they all thought her story was so funny, but now things are starting to shift. Not Tana doxing and being the embodiment of an entitled American all Europeans hate. She just doxed the lady. Not cool. Now your fans are trying to get her fired. You guys signed up for a walking tour. Bro, Cynthia just doing her job. Don't go to bed at 6.30 if you have a wine tour at 8. And I have to agree. I'm not sure why Tana thought this story would go over well, but all it did was show how entitled some influencers are, especially when exploring different countries with different expectations on basic human decency and respect. It would be one thing if Tana had told this story and changed the name and the location to keep everything really private, but to dox the woman who's just doing her job is so beyond unacceptable. Anyways guys, let me know what you think about everything down below and I'll see you next time.